So I was at this party in my junior year of high school, myself and some friends were chilling, munching on some Doritos and vibing to the music. When all of a sudden I overheard a conversation on global warming and its negative effects worldwide. And so I froze and said, what, really? After that, all the attention in the room was directed towards that topic specifically. We started to discuss different alternatives and solutions towards climate change. That's how that party changed my life. It taught me how to approach, analyze, and view problems that are compromising our world from reaching its full potential. And just for some context, this happened at the beginning of 2020, in which many people believed that the world was going to end, or at least was bound to in the future. Headlines across the media stated, we have 12 years to limit climate change catastrophe, warns, warns UN. Or, only 11 years to prevent irreversible damage from climate change, warns speaker during high-level General Assembly meeting. And so after that, myself and some friends started discussing how climate change was responsible for the Australian wildfires and the increase in temperature as 2020 is tied for the warmest year ever recorded. I mean, just look at this picture. It looks as if the world was actually going to end. Those fires destroyed ecosystem, murdering approximately 3 billion animals and destroying 46 million acres of land that were burned to ashes. And so the real question that we should be talking about is, why is this happening? Why is climate change happening? And I'll give you a few seconds to think about this. All right, I'm sure that all of you have different reasons as to why this is happening, but there's something that connects all of them together and it's the common denominator for why this is happening. That being the decisions made by us, us human beings, deforestation, burning fossil fuels, power plants, the list goes on and on and on. Those are actions that we make and consequently contribute to climate change. And so our past and current decisions have created this environmental and climate crisis. The beauty of it all is that by making different decisions, we can contribute and develop solutions that would put a halt to climate change and therefore create a positive impact on the world. Which means that if we were capable of messing, of messing things up, we're more than capable of fixing them. That's when it hit me at the party. And it's funny how inspiration comes to you at the most inconvenient and random places. We are the source of most of our problems, and yet for some of those problems, we do nothing. And for others, we do seek solutions. But for those that we do nothing, that's because all problems usually get buried. Some problems are too complex. And we have new problems to direct our efforts to. For instance, COVID-19 is like a beacon for all of our attention. Because it is one of the most pressing challenges nowadays. And so what I've learned during this pandemic is that yes, we should focus our efforts towards those problems. We should, but we should also keep climate change in mind. So once we overcome those situations, we can place our thoughts into action so that we can create impact once everything is over. Moreover, I've learned that nothing is permanent. Those problems that seem impossible with action can be resolved. And so after that realization at the party, I went home reflecting of what could I possibly do as a high school student to contribute to the reduction of climate change. And so I decided to direct my efforts towards garbage, garbage accumulation. Take this, for example. It is safe to say that if we don't recycle, we'll be living on top of a time bomb with a countdown in motion. Simulations made by Daniel Hornweg and Chris Kennedy from the University of Toronto and Victoria indicated that waste would double, triple, quadruple throughout the years. And before moving forward, imagine living in this scenario in which, will, in, which will, in which waste will constantly accumulate over time due to the lack of space, increasing population, release of toxic gases, and scarcity of raw materials. If we don't start making different decisions, this right here will become our reality. All of those factors will make our world unbearable. And the worst part is that as seen in the simulations, waste would only rise with, while simultaneously contributing to climate change through the release of carbon dioxide and methane gas during the disposal stage. However, according to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, if we start to direct our efforts towards waste reduction and recycling, we can expect to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases for about 5%. There is opportunity here. And now, going back to the party with those moving and yet devastating scenarios from Australia and pollution around the world, they impacted me and led me to hours and hours of self-reflection. Then it came to me. Although simple, my idea had good intentions and aimed to help our environment. I decided to develop an automated recycling system that focuses on incentivizing people to recycle through an instant feedback loop that's, that creates self-awareness. And I'll focus on the concept and processes that led me to this idea, as I believe that it forms a guide that the youth can follow to tackle different environmental issues that are compromising our world nowadays. 
Overall, this experience of developing my own prototype taught me numerous things when designing solutions against climate change. First of all, sustainability must be at the core of all solutions. And what I mean by that is satisfying the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations, especially when considering the constant growth of waste, consumption, and pollution. It was that prototype that taught me and, and, lead me, and led me to changing my own decision making. It also established positive results and concrete results on my own consumption behavior. Those two factors allow me to create this guy that you can follow to create a better future. And before moving forward, I'll briefly state all the steps that will be addressed into more detail later on the guide. First of all, identifying the problem, then exploring your idea, afterwards creating awareness, and lastly, perseverance and resilience. They go in as a pair. Step one, identify the problem. It's only once you've isolated what needs to be changed that you can plan a course of action to tackle that problem or in this case, climate change. Additionally, many of the problems that we try to tackle are too big or too complex for a teenager to, so to solve. But we have to start somewhere by taking the right intention toward the, towards the right direction. Because if everyone does their part, then eventually we'll start to see change. And so when talking about climate change, but more specifically garbage accumulation, mankind produces approximately 2 billion tons of waste per year. And as we know, there are different disposal methods such as landfill and incineration, but they continue to damage our environment. That's why we need to step out of these practices and innovate. And don't take this word lightly. It's about looking at new materials, disposing methods, and finding new ways to avoid residual effect. And that is through introducing new ideas or products in this case to make our world a better place. So it's after acknowledging the problem, in this case, climate change, and formulating my plan of action that was able to develop my own conceptual model and thus make con my contribution. Step two, after identifying the, your problem, you need to explore, research, talk to experts, pursue your idea, and most importantly, keep your goals in mind. I started by brainstorming, looking at different scientific articles, databases, simulations, amongst others, until I reached something I thought was unique. And for a moment, I want to focus on the word exploration, which in this context suggests stepping out of your comfort zone and finding new ways and methods of getting involved for creating a positive impact on our world. And now going back, once you have your idea, comes the actual development of it. And guess what? More research and testing and adjusting until you find the perfect product that will create the most significant impact against climate change. And so for step three, and this step is the most important for me, and I think that without this step, there, the, you wouldn't be able to achieve the most significant impact, that being awareness. As human beings, we're responsible for most of our problems, but through awareness, we're responsible for most of the solutions, while also being conscious of our own mistakes. I mean, what if you could get immediate feedback on the consequences of your words on others or the planet? What if you could know right away if your actions are either in worsening or improving our world's condition? That's what I wanted to achieve with my prototype, providing people with the statistics that tell them whether they are doing a good, bad, or just a poor job when recycling. Because honestly, if you know that you're doing something wrong, then you'll probably snap out of it and seek solutions to make things right. Am I right? And so inspired by the book, 50 Scientific Ways to Be More Persuasive, and their studies on guests reusing towels, they prove that if the majority of people are warned and aware that others are doing something, for instance, in this case, reusing a towel, but in my case, recycling, they're more likely to jump in the cause. And that's what I wanted to achieve. Bringing people locally together, sort of like a trend, so that more people will join in a cause and therefore reduce climate change. You see, it's about being conscious of our actions and seeking new alternatives for achieving better results, whether that is through climate change, political or economical affairs. It's also about understanding our problems and mistakes, while also being aware of the issues that we are facing and seeking solutions for that. Because if we, do not, we, we don't do that, then we'll never move forward and therefore significant results will never be achieved. Lastly, perseverance and resilience. And this might sound corny, but perseverance is one of the key steps for the youth to take action. Perseverance is defined as the continued effort to achieve your goals despite difficulties, failures, or challenges. And let's face it, every day we face challenges whether they be expected or unexpected. But those challenges are the ones that shapes our decisions in life and give us purpose. 
At first, my ideas and too many others would receive criticism uh, because people don't like change and they are not used to it. My own classmate would say, you're just a high school student. Your idea is too complex. You're not going to pull this off. Then came, came COVID-19 and it affected my abilities physically while also affecting me emotionally. But those ideas just motivated me even more because I see everything as a learning opportunity, as a way of pursuing your goals and proving your worthiness. The best part of assembling my prototype was about becoming responsible. And I don't mean that by, uh, understand, by achieving your deadlines and consistency, but rather acknowledging the impact that you're creating and your purpose. Finally, if it wasn't for that realization at the party, this would have never happen. It started by identifying the problem, then exploring countless and countless of ideas until it reached something I thought was unique, then evaluating the value and validity of the, that idea, becoming aware of the impact that I'm creating, and also the responsibility that I have as a designer and a human being, while also persevering, even if everything is going against you. Because at least for me, what keeps me going is the feeling of helping the world. Even if you are a high school student, don't limit yourself. And so hopefully with this guide and the guidelines within it, you can use them for pursuing your own ideas, prototypes and projects for the future. And moreover, I want to reiterate that everyone listening to this talk and around the world is capable of building and creating hope. No matter the circumstances, one person can make the difference. You can make the difference. It's only a matter of intention, how much you want it, and if you're willing to make sacrifices for it. On a separate note, I know that most of you must be thinking, how could you be saying all of this if you didn't even build your machine? To that I say, it's about what I've learned, the amount of energy, time, and the dedication that I'm placed to this on identifying the problem and seeking solutions through self-awareness and being a more resilient individual. It was that small spark in my life that changed my life around. So when you go home, or since you're already at home, I challenge you to follow the steps in this guide. Pursue your, your goals, even if they're too big or too complex. Care for each other on our planet. Get involved. Bring more people into the cause. Reach out to local recycling organizations, because one simple phone call, conversation, or party can change your life around.